I think the RTX line of GPUs might cause some issues with traditional benchmarking. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. All right, so shortly after the RTX line was announced, there was this gameplay video of Shadow of the Tomb Raider that started circulating. The video had an FPS overlay on the top left and you could see the range go from 30 FPS on a wide and illuminated scene all the way up to 70 FPS in regular third person view. Now this demo was at 1080p and it got people talking a lot. We still don't have any concrete performance benchmarks in gaming related to ray tracing or even regular rasterization on Turing, so a lot of you guys might think that this GPU is going to be terrible. Well, the demo was using ray tracing and the developer of Tomb Raider responded saying that the Nvidia ray tracing technology currently being shown in Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an early work in progress version. As a result, different areas of the game have received different levels of polish while we work towards complete implementation of this new technology. In short, if we only took this video to say that the RTX line can't keep a straight 60 FPS, we would be extremely mistaken. On top of that, don't forget that ray tracing is new in gaming and that the evolution in AI models will make it more efficient. Tomb Raider won't even have ray tracing at launch. That's how much work they still have to do to optimize it. Anyways, while it's not a good FPS range for gaming, especially with the fluctuation, I'm willing to bet that it will improve over time. Moving on to another NVIDIA subject, we finally have a performance chart for the 2080, although without actual numbers. So this chart shows us the difference between the RTX 2080 and the GTX 1080, the last generation. With the baseline, of course, is the Pascal GPU. The X axis is all of the games tested, but the Y axis is just a multiplier. It kind of sucks since we don't know if this is a comparison with ray tracing or without it, or is it only rasterization based? What I can deduce from this chart though is that since Wolfenstein 2 and Shadow of War don't support ray tracing, we should see between a 40 to 60% improvement over the 1080. Let's try to put a number on it. On average, Wolfenstein 2 in 4K will do around 48 to 54 FPS on the 1080. So the 2080 at its lowest setting would be an improvement to 68 FPS all the way up to 86 FPS. That's not bad. Sure, it's not the equivalent jump from Maxwell to Pascal, but it's still an improvement worth noting. On top of that, it seems like the Deep Learning Super Sampling, DLSS, is giving one hell of a jump to the games that support it, proving that Deep Learning has a place in the GPU market. Wait, that brings me to a horrible realization though. With AI in our GPUs, especially for gaming, wouldn't that make scores on standard benchmarks well, pretty much useless. I mean, I could probably spiral down the rabbit hole, but I don't want to. But since benchmarks are the same thing over and over again, then a repeated pass of the same benchmark on an AI, or even just Nvidia's supercomputer calculated AI model that you put in an RTX 2080 or 2070 might have one hell of an edge over older or competitors GPU. I wonder if that's what's happening in this chart with the deep learning super sampling. Interesting. Let's talk about that on a live stream. Moving on, it seems like Microsoft wants to bundle Xbox Live, Game Pass, and an actual console as a sort of subscription service. Now the whole thing will apparently be called Xbox All Access, and the monthly fee for this subscription paired with an Xbox One X is $34.99 for 24 months, after which I guess you only pay for the subscription services. If you do the calculations, the amount spent after 24 months would cost around 840 bucks. Subtract Xbox Live at $120 for two years and Game Pass at $240 and you're left with an Xbox One X at $480. It's not bad if you prefer your consoles to be brand new and you don't have to shell out $480 on the first payment. The Xbox One S bundle is apparently going to be $22, netting you an Xbox One S at $170. That's cheaper than retail. It's looking like this program might be US only though, so don't get your hopes up. Moving on to some gaming news, Black Ops 4 wants to make it clear that it is made and optimized for PC. In their newest PC trailer, phrases like optimized for PC, 4K ultra wide, 
multi-monitor support and designed for keyboard and mouse were all used to make sure that you know that they're trying this time. All the footage captured was also on PC and it looks pretty good. The game will also match your mouse sensitivity from Overwatch or Destiny if you have them on Battle.net. Thank you. It's the, it's the little things that I like. Thank you. And now let's review yesterday's poll. It seems like it's split with a preference towards the 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. time slot. You guys gave me good reasons as to why you prefer one to the other, so I'm gonna try to make it happen around maybe 2 to 3 p.m. Now make sure you're subscribed, but more importantly that you have the bell icon clicked and that its option is set to all notifications or you might miss the live stream notification. I will try to make it happen this weekend, but if I can't, it will be on to the next weekend. And that's pretty much it guys hopefully you've enjoyed don't forget to drop me a like and a comment down below click right here to see the latest video right here and right here to subscribe to the channel it would be greatly appreciated free content and subscription don't forget that bell with the, the all notification thing too it's very important for live streamers all right stay frosty and i'll see you on the next one oh stay frosty